Hello, everyone. The movie we are going to talk about today is called Invictus. It is a movie about a man who overcomes the difficulties and become a unique leader and unites his people to achieve national unity through sportsmanship. After serving imprisonment of 27 years, when Mandela is elected as the president of South Africa. Mandela is faced with the challenge of uniting the people of the country and eradicating racism, which has been prevalent during his time. He encouraged the white people to stay in the office and improve their vision and confidence. Despite facing oppression at the hand of Africans, he wants their help to run in the government with peace and collaboration. He has the strong ability to forgive and let go. He keeps his grudges and works towards the cause of integrity. Mandela invited Captain Franco is spinner over tea. They talk about philosophy of leadership and how to inspire a team when Mandela explain inspiration. Mandela to Franco is we need to we need an inspiration Franco because to build our nation we must exceed all our expectations. He broke the wall between the team and the blacks. Mandela handshake with Ruby team. He openly support the team and send a clear message that the Springboks should have the support of not just white but all South Africans. He not only wants to boost the team confidence but also inspire them for their upcoming tasks and challenges. Mandela, the world can be changed by sports. Few things has its ability to move people, inspire them, and bring them together. It has greater capacity to dissolve racial barriers than governments do. Instead of picking a side, black or white, President Mandela decided to fight for a united South Africa. He appointed white bodyguard in the office. He credits others rather than himself as his. Acclaims Franco for the team's victory. Enjoy tea in a meeting with Pinner, even though it is British and not African custom. Presidents are the ones who receive service, respect, kindness, and concern, but they rarely show this to others. But Mandela shows these things to his staff. See himself as a president of a single nation, not two rival races. Want to use his leadership skill to make South Africa a successful and unified nation. Not so. Listen to those whose society had ignored and sold out to those whose society had cast away. He served the poor and the rich. He served the education and the Ill- illiterate. There is no one Mandela did not care for. He saw everyone as his brother and sister, even his enemy. While rulers all over the world were busy empowering themselves and their friends, he was busy empowering his people. He was a unifier. As the old adage goes, "United we stand, divided we fall." When Mandela took power, he sought to bring whites, blacks, and other minorities together. Some expected him to favor blacks, particularly those from his Kosa tribe. But because of his vision for a rainbow nation, South Africa is currently benefiting from its rich diversity, economically, intellectually, and culturally. The last president of apartheid era, South Africa, is F. W. Dekler, held held Nelson Mandela as a great. Unifier who display a remarkable lack of bitterness, self-sacrifice, a messiah-like figure to his people. Nelson Mandela spent 27 years of his precious life in prison on Roman Island, hammering on rocks in the scorching heat during the day, only to retire to a tiny 80 by 7 foot concert cell with only a straw mat to sleep on. When he was offered freedom in 1985, he refused, saying, "I cannot." And will not give any entertaining at a time when I and you, the people, are not free. Your freedom and mine cannot be separated. Compassion. It is easy to forgive a stranger and easy to forgive a friend, but how difficult it is to forgive an enemy. Nelson Mandela forgave his greatest adversary, the apartheid government, which not only caused tremendous suffering to himself and his family, but also to his countrymen. He could have demanded the heads of those who murdered thousands of innocents in danger, in danger South Africans, but he chose the higher road instead. Setting up the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, he left a legacy of forgiveness and reconciliation, not only for his people but also for the world.